Everybody, it's Tyler here at the Wisconsin Regional checking in team number 8096, Cash Money. This team here, an absolutely phenomenal machine. Take a look at Cash Money, what they have to offer here uh, this year. I love their uh, handoff area that they have. We'll talk more about that. Uh, going to a fantastic arm and gripper up here, and a lot more too on programming. Cash Money had a pretty good event, their first one. Looking for a lot more here at Wisconsin. Let's find out more about them coming up on Behind the Bumpers. This video on First Updates Now is made possible by viewers like you and also the following sponsors. If your team is using SOLIDWORKS, make sure you log into the 3D Experience platform to gain access to tutorials, collaborate with other users, and download the charge up field and kit up parts. Go to SOLIDWORKS.com first and click on Log into 3D Experience platform to gain access. The Charged Up competition season is here. We have a ton of live Twitch and YouTube content coming to you. All of our uploads and archives, including shows, behind the bumpers, finalysis, and more, are available at youtube.com slash firstupdatesnow. Check out all of our live shows on Mondays and Tuesdays at twitch.tv slash firstupdatesnow. Claire, let's start off talking about uh, your intake and handoff area. Now, I love this uh, drop-down feature that you have on it. What I really like to hear about, of course, what goes into it, but how did you get to this point in the first place and maybe anything else that you tried and didn't quite work out for your team as well? Yeah, so we started with a, we chose an intake because we wanted something full width that will help us easily intake pieces. And it also helps with um, like stability of our robot. It kind of offsets the weight of our arm when fully extended. And it also helps lighten our claw because you know, <laughs> we don't have to actually intake with the claw. So it is deployed with a four bar mechanism. We started with a single pivot, but we found that it was less robust. And also it allows us to have a backstop connected on the intake rather than the claw. So we can also intake from the shelf. We originally did look at deploying this with a pneumatic cylinder, but with packaging all of our spark maxes and the compressors and everything else in here, the cylinder geometry just didn't quite work out. So basically it would, it was just a lot easier to just use a motor and put a four bar on it. Um, and then looking, uh, Claire, if I can ask you on this as well too, from when you were experimenting with kind of different like intake uh, wheels, so to speak on this, did you go with any other options for something like this first? Yeah, so we tested compliant wheels and entraption stars, but we decided on these because they would help fold around the cones a lot easier. Um, also, if I want to talk about this for a second, we have two arms, which are spring loaded and that helps center the game pieces and it adapts to the shape of whichever game object we're intaking. And the centering helps it for the handoff. Yeah, start. I really like that you have the option of uh, such a wide intake, but still to get the uh, packaging really well uh, too. On the handoff itself, is there anything like from when you were uh, going through the season like that you might've struggled with or you had to try to get better improvements with on trying to get that handoff to work out? Um, I talked earlier about the, the backstop here. Um, one thing that we did add was a sensor at the top of the handoff. So the arm comes down immediately and the sensor can tell when there's a game object that's fully in, uh, intook. So then we can immediately start lifting the elevator for scoring. Let's keep moving on, talk to Jay a little bit more in regards to uh, the kind of the rest of the process as you go through with your arm and your elevator sort of thing. So uh, walk us through, I love the carbon fiber by the way too, uh, but talk to us more about how this structure all came together. Yeah, so as Claire talked about, we started early on in the season. We knew we wanted to have a handoff up here. So we just went through a lot of iterations in this gripper and how we're actually going to hold on to the game objects. Um, this and it was not even close to the first iteration. This is the ninth iteration of this gripper. Wow. And we built up several others like we have here. This almost worked, but didn't have quite enough force to actually close on the cube once it went there. Um, so we moved over to the So we moved over to the pair of four bars we have right here and actually did the force math to find out that we have about 12 pounds of force per four bar. And we, that's enough to close easily on the cube, but not enough to pop cubes. Um, that is obviously on our arm. It's carbon fiber because we want it to be stupid light so we could move it around really fast yep. and keep our CG low. Um, and it is pivoted on this wrist type mechanism here, down this. It's not powered, it's a virtual four bar, but it's not actually one to one. We have a 39 tooth sprocket down here and a 32 tooth up here. So we get about 30 degrees of travel of the, um, of the claw as we move the arm around. Um, that is our second stage of extension right there, is just our elevator. It's just a one-stage elevator. We're driving it with two Neo 550s that are hidden down under here. And that allows us to extend and retract about 21 and a half inches very fast. We also have two encoders on this, and we're using the Chinese remainder theorem on that. So we have the two, and they're offset on two different types of gears. So we have full absolute position over the entire travel of the elevator. Um, we also have absolute position on our arm, and that encoder is back here. Um, and this whole gearbox actually comes off with the arm. 
So we can pull the arm off with two bolts and swap in a new one, and the zeros will stay the same, and we don't have to re-zero. Um, yeah, and that's our score thing. I love all the thought process that's gone into it. I mean, especially with able to just change the stuff out so quickly as well, too. Uh, one of the things I noticed, too, is you are doing a custom swerve as well on your own. We've seen so many teams go with the COTS option for it. Uh, talk to me more about uh, Cash Money's option to go with the custom swerve and kind of what's gone into it. Yeah, so this year we started the season, we're like, we knew we wanted to be really, really small so we could easily fill in a charge station. And we also knew we wanted to be fast and maneuverable, so we wanted to swerve. Um, we liked Rev's max swerve because it's small, it's light, and this module is based on that. It is very similar, but it's about half a pound lighter than the max swerve, and we have a one and a half inch wide tread on it. So that means we get less tread wear, we get more grip on the charge station and on the field, and it's just all around nicer to have that one and a half inch wide tread. Keep on moving on this for a while here. Let's talk more about uh, some of the programming, positional control, that sort of thing. Asher, talk to me more about uh, just some of the cool stuff from programming that's gone on this robot. Because watching on the field, you can definitely tell uh, that it's just not a mechanical thing that goes into it. You've put a lot into from code wise to make this robot function. Yeah, so it's obviously a very tightly integrated robot. Um, it's very specific with its actions. And one of our goals was to have it be as easy as possible for the driver to drive it around. Um, so you saw earlier those motions, I was not moving those manually. Those are all just button presses. Sure. So obviously the positions are all programmed in and the motion is really smooth. We're using trapezoidal motion profiles for pretty much everything that's moving on the robot. So that means it moves quickly and smoothly. There's no jerky motion. The handoff is entirely automatic. I hold the button, the intake goes down, the arm goes down. And then once the game sensor sees an object, the, uh, the arm goes back up and then the intake comes back up. So everything is very automatic. It's very similar for scoring. The operator presses a button to tell it where it's going to score, high, mid, low, and whether it's a cone or a cube. And then the driver holds a button, it extends the arm, it presses another button and it scores it and comes back to where it was originally meant to start. Uh, and you guys are doing some uh, object detection as well, too, right, in regards to the cones as well. Can you talk to me more about how that works and kind of showcase that? Yeah, so we're using a Limelight 2 Plus on the front of our robot near the intake. And we've programmed that to essentially look for the color yellow. So in auto, when we want to look for cones, we can use that Limelight to try to identify where they are. And if you come over here, can you, um, the intake is blocking some of it right now. But you can see that Jay is holding a cone. Yeah. And the limelight is finding some of it, what's not blocked by the intake. And it tracks it pretty well. And it's super useful for autonomous. Um, are you using IntelliOp as well, too, or is it mostly an autonomous function? At the moment, no. We'd like to use it in IntelliOp if we have the time to add that functionality. Because it's very fast and it's convenient for the driver if they have to do less. But we just haven't had the time to work that in yet. Well, Cash Money, you have an absolutely phenomenal machine here. I can't wait to see how you do at the Wisconsin Regional as well, too. Uh, so best of luck to you here. Thanks for telling us more about your team and your robot as well, too. And good luck in the future as well. Yeah, Thanks thank a lot. Thank you for talking to us. This video on First Updates Now is made possible by viewers like you and also the following sponsors. If your team is using SolidWorks, make sure you log into the 3D Experience platform to gain access to tutorials, collaborate with other users, and download the charge up field and kit up parts. Go to SolidWorks.com first and click on Log into 3D Experience platform to gain access. The Charged Up competition season is here. We have a ton of live Twitch and YouTube content coming to you. All of our uploads and archives, including shows, behind the bumpers, analysis, and more, are available at youtube.com slash firstupdatesnow. Check out all of our live shows on Mondays and Tuesdays at twitch.tv slash firstupdatesnow. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring the bell to stay up to date on our new videos. Keep the conversation going and provide your input to our content. Watch our live shows at twitch.tv forward slash first updates now. Join our Discord at discord.gg forward slash first updates now and check out Fun FTC on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, and First Updates Now on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and Twitter.